In this flourishing world, the giant warriors are created. So we move on to the pre-credit in the opening sequence. You have to pay attention to these margin parts. These are pigs, a symbol of prosperity. This kind of symbol represents flourishment. In the time of prosperity, people resort to gluttony and endless fights. Swords are drawn in the lower margin, so these two symbols represent gluttony and endless fights respectively. That was the time when the giant warriors were created. This picture well depicts the grotesqueness of people making man-shaped objects. This tapestry is followed by the image of the Armageddon finally breaking out. Like this. You can see that the margins no longer have pigs of prosperity or swords. Instead, they are now filled with graphic images of skeletons buried in the ground. So, all hell breaks loose. You can see the giant warrior spitting fire and people falling from buildings. These buildings are also actually several thousand meters high, like those we already saw. They are all burned down and the world is collapsing. This layout of the giant warrior resembles Hokusai's print of a giant skeleton titled Gasha Dokuro, but facing the opposite direction. I also feel a slight essence of South American paintings from this layout. This margin, which here insinuates an enormous number of deaths, is quite interesting. And the subsequent scene shows... Here it is. It shows the actual giant warriors. This is one good way of transitioning between the scenes. I mean, it will be a bumpy transition if just you jump directly to the animation part from the tapestry. So what Miyazaki did was he slid in a partially enlarged view after the tapestry image. This transition between cuts is an extremely instinctive sense of virtuosity. I can't imagine someone other than Miyazaki pulling off such a trick. When this scene comes along, Ano in the audio commentary says, This opening sequence is so well made. He is praising the virtuosity in this transition between cuts. This scene is briefly succeeded by the enlarged view of the creature's head and then the actual moving giant warriors appear. So you can easily follow the transition. If you just simply jump from tapestry to animation, it would seem quite odd and inconsistent. But if you slip in this single cut of enlarged view, the audience can have time to imagine what the warriors are watching, the world of apocalypse, and then suddenly you see this scene. The thousand meter buildings collapsing and objects so big are standing. And they are colossal. In this tapestry, you see the eye of the giant warrior. And this smoothly guides your attention to their eyes, which are the only things glowing in this screen. I mean, one of the glowing things, including their spears. This kind of transition is not something you can learn. Theoretical type of anime directors can't do this. It's really an impulsive flash of genius. That's why Ano doing the audio commentary is saying, so well made. Historical facts you can learn from this scene is that these giant warriors actually had a height of several hundreds or even a thousand meters. You can see that from these buildings collapsed. So these humongous giants are neatly aligned side by side. We cannot even imagine how many of them are lined up. We can only see what's captured within the animation frame. But actually, this is an image of these huge 1,000 meter tall giants aligned side by side all the way to the horizon destroying the world. So, they are making the march of death over the world and nothing can escape from them. The result is shown by the tapestry again. So, this tapestry, this no longer has the upper margin, but only this lower margin. The upper part of the tapestry is intentionally trimmed so that the audience is focused on the lower part to see these dead people curled up. Earlier, the tapestry showed symbolic abstract images of swords, pigs, and fish. But now they show images of curled human bodies which can clearly be recognized as human corpses buried underground. Everything is swallowed into the flames. 
Every life in this world, such as birds, animals, and even plants, are lost in flames. This is what the tapestry tells us. So, any living creature appearing thereafter in the story of Naushka, like frogs and horse claws, are all gene manipulated creatures. The tapestry briefly insinuates that the world was reset, and almost all living creatures other than human beings, like animals and plants, were made extinct. The tapestry again transitions to an animation part. The audiences are now used to this transition. We should pay attention to the city burned in a flame and the difference in size between the buildings and the giant warriors. This again expresses how enormous they are. There is a special effects film titled Giant God Warrior Appears in Tokyo. It was not widely released in public, it was just shown in an exhibit called Special Effects Museum. I think you can still see some highlight scenes on YouTube. The short film depicted the warrior with the size relatively faithful to this image, so we should imagine that they are creatures actually hundreds to 1,000 meters tall. And this is a march of such creatures. As you can see in Howl's flying battle scene in Howl's Moving Castle, Miyazaki avoids drawing what's happening on the ground during mass destruction and genocide scenes. Another example is a scene in Future Boy Conan. So, as in Howl, Miyazaki only shows what went on at a high altitude, like what was happening in the sky. And he doesn't show the consequences down on the ground, like how people die or how people run around in the flames. This is because when Miyazaki was making Nausicaa, he strongly kept in mind that he was making a children's film. Well, a huge difference from Isao Takahata, who graphically depicted a B-29 air raid. So these details are depicted from a bird's eye view from slightly above the warriors. And next is another scene showing the giant warriors. Half of the images in the tapestry in the opening sequence are actually about the giant warriors. The scene shows the warriors vanishing into the horizon. You can slightly see the Earth's roundness, a further indication of how enormous the vanishing giants are. Miyazaki is truly a genius in layouts. He definitely did not draw the roundness just to show some bulging ground. He slightly drew the ground round to show the enormousness of the warriors. So, they are different from those we see in the main part of the film, such as the one that has turned to stone or that awakens in the climax scene. Those don't even have the spears, these are the scary ones. And none of them come back in the anime or manga version. Now this is the scene, after the destruction by the warriors in the opening sequence, the song still continues. These are not insects, which are yet to appear. They are described as birds of death in the storyboard. This does not literally mean that the birds are flying. Only the birds with skulls in their beaks flying over the collapsed buildings in the destructed world. This is a metaphor of death ruling the world. Just when you thought that nothing has escaped death, inchworms appear in the lower margin. And some pill bug like creature appears at the end of a long series of bones. So the world of insects starts from this world ruled by death. Now, the tapestry shows a series of events. This shows that the new ecosystem is born. The upper margin is filled with roly polies. The lower margin shows the sun. These suns represent brand new days. The sun rises and sets. The apocalyptic destruction has ended and it's the start of the new days. It's the world of insects. So, it shows that the world is now ruled by insects and these some kind of fungus. The fungus is growing and here you can see the sun rising again. This scene, this slides directly to this scene, like this. 
The insects in the upper margin and the rising and setting suns on the lower side gradually transform into symbols to represent that it's getting close to the present time in the story. So it's getting closer to the present time, new age where the insects rule the world and people can only live in limited areas. You see this big sign like in the Bible. In the Bible, in the time before printing became popular, the first page in a new chapter had an opening sentence beginning with an extremely complex decorative letter. You should see this like that, an extremely decorative opening letter that looks like R, S, or G. The opening letter indicating the beginning of the new lives of humans. In this life of humans, the deceased and those who are forced to live in limited areas are seeking salvation. They seek salvation and with the song coming into the climax, da -da -da, a new legend is born. As I mentioned earlier, the symbols indicate the present time. Present to the future, the people are hoping for a flying goddess with white wings clothed in a blue robe will someday come to save the world again.